Welcome to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. My name is Jennifer Brown, and I am the Family Consumer Science Extension Agent for the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service in both Person and Granville Counties. Well, it's that time of year again. We want you to learn how to age with gusto. Our annual Aging with Gusto conference takes place every year on the last Tuesday of August at the Person County Office Building. We host this event every year in conjunction with the Person County Senior Center to provide more information on uh, aging, on health and wellness, and to give uh, the older adults in our community information about different resources that are available to them. So I want to share this year's brochure with you. Um, we have this uh, brochure available at our uh, extension office. and. Um, we provide this information uh, every year in this format. So this is our registration brochure. We have a couple of different workshops scheduled, but first and foremost, we start the day on Tuesday, August 27th um, at 9 a.m. with registration. And we are set up in the auditorium at the Person County Office Building, and we usually have vendor booths, you know, nonprofits, uh, organizations, different things like that, that will set up a booth to provide information, to give our participants a chance to go around, visit at the booths, talk to them, ask any questions. We typically have about 10 to 13 different vendor booths, organizations uh, with tables set up. And once you've had a chance to do that, we start the morning workshops. We have two different workshop time slots. Within each workshop time slot, we offer three choices. So when you register, you pick which of the three from the first time slot you wish to attend. And then you're going to choose which uh, workshop in the second time slot you wish to attend. We can typically have, um, you know, a good number of people attend this event. So when you register, we ask you for your first choice and your second choice. So registrations have just started coming in. So it's not too late to get your first choice there, but it is first come first serve. So if you're registering later in August, you might not get your, your first choice. I want that to, to, you know, make everyone aware of that. So the workshops that we have scheduled this week or this year are uh, a variety of different things. We like to promote physical activity and movement because we know how important that is as we age. So we have a personal trainer that is going to be offering a chair workout. So again, it will be a seated workout. Normally it's done with like, you know, weights or, um, you know, resistance bands or different things like that. We're not gonna have all the materials for this particular day because I'm not asking anyone to bring a, a set of weights, but you'll get a, uh, still get a really good workout in the morning if that's the one you sign up for. You can also choose a smartphone photography workshop uh, that will be taught by our digital skills extension agent, Ashley Cummings. She will be talking about your smartphone, but how to use the camera and the different features that are on your phone. Whether you have an iPhone or a Android phone, she's gonna talk about a variety of different tips for taking, maybe you're taking selfies or maybe you just wanna take pictures or videos to think about your background or your lighting or different things like that. Then we have the Person County Health Department. One of the health educators is going to come and talk to us about navigating sexually transmitted infections in older adults. The numbers in North Carolina are continually and steadily increasing every year. And the older adult population um, is one that we're seeing that increase in. So we want to cover information. This is just going to be strictly informational where we're talking about, um, you know, a community health problem, a, a health problem that is a problem in our own community. So um, the different uh, three top prevalent sexually transmitted infections in North Carolina that are affecting our older adult population, as well as prevention, testing, diagnose, and any treatment options. So again, during the first time slot, you'll have an opportunity to choose one of those three. And then right after that, we have a very small break just to transition to your next workshop. We have another physical activity 
uh, workshop that will be provided in the second go around. So if you're just, you know, interested in the physical activity, you can take two of them. That's fine. But there is a walk with ease program that the uh, Person County Senior Center, I believe, is planning on offering this program sometime starting in the fall. But we're going to give you just an introduction workshop into the walk with ease program. And it's going to be led by one of the employees from the Person County Senior Center to talk about, you know, walking, but different specifically strategies you can do that if you have arthritis so that you can still be physically active, but you can also manage your condition and improve the quality of your life. Then we have a fire safety workshop. We remember being children and being taught how to, you know, stop, drop and roll and to have a emergency plan, you know, know how to have, you know, which exits you're going to go out in case there's a, uh, you know, a fire drill at your school or if there's a fire at your home. We remember being taught these things. But as we age, oftentimes we don't think about that. We don't think about, I don't have the mobility or the dexterity anymore to maybe, you know, climb out a window or, 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 you know, open the, the windows that might be, you know, old and, and stuck like some of the ones I'm sure at my house are, and you've got to climb over a bush or maybe it's a two-story drop or, you know, a variety of different things. So we want to um, examine some of the information and provide you uh, information so that you can increase your safety in the event of a fire. Uh, they'll talk about fire-related deaths, discuss the vulnerability for this particular um, audience, as well as outlining effective strategies to stay safe. Even if it's something simple as decluttering your home so that you don't have a bunch of papers that could uh, catch on fire or increase the you know speed or veracity of the fire. So we have someone from the Person County Division of Community Risk Reduction that will be teaching that workshop. And then I have a, a extension agent from Orange County, my uh, coworker in family consumer science, Ms. Uh, Ivelisse Cologne is going to come talk about uh, scams and avoiding scams or fraud. So you're often answering that phone or getting a text or an email and you're like, who is this? I don't know who it's from. So everyone should be aware of the different, different types of scams that are out there. Uh, and oftentimes scammers are um, really targeting our older adult population. So you're going to get information to recognize the red flags so that you can prevent yourself from being taken advantage of and having you know, someone scam you. And then, of course, we end with door prizes. And um, then we'll wish you well to go off and enjoy the rest of your day. So it's a short event, kind of from 9 to 12 is how long it lasts. But it's jam-packed with a lot of good information, a lot of good resources, a lot of good, you know, trinkets and goodies for you to take home in your bag. So this registration brochure is available on our extension office that you can print off. It is uh, available at the Person County Senior Center you could uh, contact us and we can um, email it to you as well. Um, I do have a link on our uh, Facebook page that you can follow us at Person Granville FCS on Facebook and Instagram. So that can take you to that. But part of the brochure is this little registration slip right here. So we just kind of need your basic who, what, where, and when you know, you, you're coming from. And then as you can see, it has the different workshop time slots. We need you to please select a first and a second choice um, because we are constantly getting registrations uh, being brought in. Um, and uh, we want to give you your first choice, but if not, we want to at least know what your second choice is so we know what workshop to put you in. Uh, you can also scan this QR code right now and um, it'll take you to a Google Google form so you can register online. So whether you feel more comfortable with a paper registration or a uh, online registration, either way is fine. We'll get you in the system. OK, so if you um, aren't sure where you can find this, you can also go to our Person County Extension website. Uh, it is uh, person dot ces.ncsu.edu.
So, or just Google the Person County Extension Office. And this is what our website looks like. And you can see right here in the front in the middle, it says Aging with Gusto. And you can just click on that link and it's got information um, that, that I kind of just went over. If you click on that link right there, it'll open up the brochure so you could print off the registration slip. You can see again, the time everything is, it gives you kind of that breakdown of what the workshops are. And then you can just even click on the register online. Please read the workshop descriptions first because on this is just a simple registration form. As you can see, there are no descriptions for the workshops and want to make sure that you know what you are registering for. But you just got to um, give us your, your name, address, telephone, and pick which workshops you want. It's a very simple registration. We wanted to keep it as simple as possible. We have done this uh, particular event, as I mentioned, um, since I know at least 2000, so for uh, many years now, and it's always been a, a really good event. I've always had a lot of uh, older adults come to this event and say that they got, you know, they had so much fun just being around everybody. They got a lot of good information, good handouts, and it was a wonderful uh, resource for them. We do not provide food at this event, so we end right before lunchtime. Um, uh, but that's why we, it's free and we don't charge you anything. So if I, if I offered a meal, I'd have to probably charge some for that. And we want to make this accessible to anyone and everyone. So we encourage you to, to get registered, to bring a friend, to tell people about it. Uh, maybe you're part of a civic group or a church and you want to get a group of people together. Please let me know and if I can help you in any way register for, for this year's event. Um, the, we do, um, we will give you like a little bag that you can, uh, go around to the vendor booths. So you, you don't need to bring anything, just you and yourself. And when you get there, we will have a name tag for you that will have what you registered for. So once you register, all you have to do is make sure you put the event on your calendar. So you don't forget Tuesday, August 27th at the Person County Office Building from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. will be our annual Aging with Gusto event. If you have any questions, also you can uh, feel free to drop by the Senior Center. And this event is one that we do in conjunction with them every year. Okay. Uh, if you are interested in any of our uh, other workshops, you can, again, go to our Purse County website that I mentioned. You can go to our uh, Facebook or Instagram page at Person Granville FCS. And I post um, all of our workshops, uh, information about upcoming stuff. I post uh, Facebook events on there. I also... Um, if there's a particular topic you're interested in that maybe we're not providing a workshop, please, you know, shoot me an email or a, uh, you know, message and tell me what workshops you're interested in. Call the extension office. Um, we do have a Person County event right page as well because we do offer a variety of different workshops that we do uh, virtually. We also join forces with a um, a variety of different teams. One of the ones that we have uh, for the rest of this year that we have planned is every month we have what's called an extension at home series. Okay. So this is what our Eventbrite page that you can just scan that QR code and it'll take you there. And it shows the upcoming workshop. So we have one Every month on the second Tuesday of the month at noon, these are our virtual workshops. It might not be always me teaching it, but because um, uh, again, a variety of different extension agents across the district offer this. But something new we're going to do for this Tuesday, August 13th, we have a, a, a bread workshop. So we're going to talk about how to, to make this lovely bread art right here. And um, my fellow coworker from Forsyth County, Virginia Lopez, is going to be leading that workshop. So if you're interested, you can just go to this page, scan the QR code, and uh, go and register for that workshop or any of the workshops that we have listed up here. But specifically for this Tuesday, August 13th, if you are not um, maybe tech savvy or you don't have good you know, Wi-Fi or internet or a computer or any of that, we are going to be offering a, a 
screening of this workshop. So you can register for it virtually, you can watch it on your own, or you can come to the Person County Extension Office at the Person County Office Building on Tuesday, August 13th at noon. And we are going to show uh, the Zoom recording or the live stream of the Zoom up in one of our rooms. We are asking that you call the Extension Office to, to let us know that you would like to attend so we can make sure we have enough room for that. And our extension office phone number is 336-599-1195. Okay, so we are going to take a uh, brief break and get a word on from one of our sponsors. It's August, and as we start heading toward the fall season, we can already be thinking about cooler days of fall that will be here soon when we really enjoy getting outdoors again and doing our fall lawn work and our fall flower gardens. It is also time now to kill those weeds in the lawn to be ready for fall seeding. T.G. Brooks Supply Company has the chemicals to do it. They are fully stocked for fall, and meanwhile, if you still need irrigation, they have plenty of irrigation needs such as hose and sprinklers and piping. For your work in the yard, they have yard tools like rakes, hose, diggers, choppers, pitchforks, pruning saws, loppers, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, and lawn sweepers. And for your fall flower bed, they have your hardwood mulches and dyed mulches and that really good triple ground mulch. They have mulch in bags or by the trailer or pickup load and they can arrange delivery for you if you need it. So this year, beautify with fresh pine needles and for planting, get you some topsoil, planting soil, and they have black cow. By the way, they also have the Pride dog food, including the Pride Pro Series. Remember, across the street, there is Maybell's Boutique where you can shop for children's clothes, shoes, and a variety of choices for children. No matter if you are shopping for children, the homeowner, farmer, builder, contractor, you'll have the best opportunity to find what you're looking for at T.G. Brooks Supply Company and Maybell's Boutique. You will love the friendly family business there where every customer, no matter how large or small, is treated with the same courtesy, serving customers since 1936. T.G. Brooks Supply Company. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. My name is Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. Before the break, we were talking about our annual Aging with Gusto Conference, which is held every year on the last Tuesday of August at the Person County Office Building from 9 to 12. It is free to attend, and we've got a lot of good workshops available for you to register for. If you're interested in more information, then check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Person Granville FCS. It's our Food for Thought page. But I want to also let you know about a lot of other events we have plans before then in the month of August. So every, uh, you know, kind of first of the month, we send out a, uh, a monthly FCS uh, newsletter that will let people know about some of the things that we've got uh, coming up. So we sent this out recently, and I want to share it uh, with you. So as you can see, we always have a, a, a list there of what's going on throughout the entire month in both person, Gramble, or even virtually. If you're interested in our virtual workshops, you can check them out uh, typically at our Person County or Granville County Extension Eventbrite pages. Um, some months I'm in, you know, doing more workshops in Person County, some I'm doing more in Granville. It just depends on the, the different requests I get from different organizations, as well as, for example, this month I've got, you know, a pretty big event planned with our Aging with Gusto Um event. So uh, I have a lot of other smaller workshops that I'm doing in uh, Granville County. So first and foremost, next Tuesday, I will be at the Dementia Caregiver Conference in Henderson, more specifically the uh, Vance Granville Community College. This event is hosted by the Cartar Regional Council of Governments and the Dementia Alliance of North Carolina. Uh, they have their own registration link for you to uh, click on to attend. There is a slight registration fee of $10 for, uh, 
for a family caregiver uh, ticket, but it's a lot of good information. I can show you their registration page there. Um, you know, for the first two hours of the morning, besides visiting with the vendor booths, such as the Cooperative Extension Office, they have Melanie Bunn, who is a, a registered nurse and dementia trainer with Dementia Alliance of North Carolina. Just hearing her speak is is well worth the the trip and the ten dollars. She is a phenomenal speaker and is very uh, informative. Has a lot of good information. Has worked with dementia and Alzheimer's for many many years and can truly you know break it down in a way that um, anyone can can understand and learn a little bit more about how you as a caregiver or a family member of someone who is suffering from this illness, how you need to, you know, handle your emotions, how you need to speak, how you need to communicate, how you need to handle different situations. Um, and then Michael Patterson from the Qatar Regional Council of Governments will also be speaking. He's a caregiver specialist. So he will also just talk about the importance of taking care of yourself. If you've ever been a uh, a caregiver, you um, you know it, it's a it's a thankless job. It can be very draining on you physically, emotionally, mentally, you know, every way that that it can be. And um, if you don't take care of yourself, then you can't take care of the people that depend and rely on you. Okay, so this will be a well worthwhile event. Uh, and the Cooperative Extension Service will be there with a table, with handouts, giveaways, information on Alzheimer's, dementia, aging, memory, uh, a, a lot of good information for you. And then we have our annual uh, Lunch and Learn workshop. This month's Lunch and Learn is focused on healthy eating anywhere. So food on the go. We understand that everyone is always living a, a very busy life. You're, you're always having to, to run errands or if you've got kids, you might be taking them places or a travel ball league or dance or, you know, there's so many more extracurricular activities nowadays than I remember as, as a kid. So we want to provide you information um, so that you can eat healthy anywhere. You'll get tips and tricks for food on the go, what to look for if you're at a restaurant, you know, what's what's the healthier item on the, the menu. And if nothing else, just to focus a little bit more on portion control. Maybe you're not eating at the best place or it's a it's a treat for your birthday or something like that and you want to enjoy yourself. It, it doesn't mean you need to like gorge yourself. So portion control can be very important as well. This month's Lunch and Learn will be next uh, Wednesday, August 7th at noon at the Percy County Office Building in room 166. It's one of our uh, extension offices there. We have uh, a kitchen. We will be providing lunch. So we are charging $5 for that workshop. And that $5 needs to be at the extension office today for you to be registered. So we know how many people to uh, prepare for, to buy food for, whatnot. So please get registered. The extension office is open until five o'clock today. And we are located at 304 South Morgan Street in room 123. You can pay your $5. Please let us know if you do have any specific food allergies that we need to stay away from while we're planning our food. If you haven't had a chance to visit so far this um, this summer, the Stovall Branch Library in Granville County has been hosting a farmer's market on the second and fourth Thursdays of each month. And uh, last I've heard, they're still planning to do that during the month of August. Again, it depends on uh, vendor interest as well as the weather. So it'll uh, it's tentatively scheduled for August 8th and August 22nd. It's from 3.30 to 6.30 each afternoon. And some of our extension volunteers uh, will be there setting up our donation station booth. At the donation station, we have... Uh, recipes, information on nutrition, giveaways, and so much more. But one of the main focuses of the donation station is to collect money 
and or produce to be donated to help local people in need. So the way it works is we will have a, um, a jar that you can go in and just put your monetary donation in. Or while you're shopping around at the different vendors at uh, the market, you can just buy a little bit of extra produce and you can come and donate it to our table. We will take that produce and we give it to a local food pantry. In this case, we actually just take it inside the Stovall Branch Library because in the libraries at um, Stovall and Creedmoor and Oxford, they have a farm to fridge program. So local farmers or gardeners or whatever else, or even individuals like yourself can donate produce and it goes in the refrigeration unit at the library. So individuals who might be in need uh, can just go in the library, you know, as they would if they were checking out a book and they can just check out some food. There is uh, no paperwork. You just go open the fridge, take what you want. And we try to provide some recipes or information. So if you get something that you aren't familiar with, Maybe beets have been donated or um, uh, Swiss chard or bok choy or something like that. You're not familiar with cooking, uh, even if it's something you know, sweet potatoes, and you want some new recipes. The local essentials can help you do that. Again, we've always got recipes, uh, not maybe every day, but but fairly often on our Facebook and Instagram page at Person Granville FCS um, on our Food for Thought page. And if you want more information about taking that food and making a meal out of it, we uh, I will be at the South Branch Library in Creedmoor in Granville next Friday at one in the afternoon, teaching a workshop on fall meal planning. So we're going to be talking about how to plan meals for the fall season, benefits of having a, a versatile pantry, ways to organize and keep track of some of that food that you might have in there, and just uh, give you ideas for a variety of meals that can be prepared from a set of staple ingredients there. Okay. So you don't have to just look in your pantry and be like, oh, I've got the same stuff. So I'm going to have to prepare the same meal that I always have. So um, this workshop is free for you to attend, and we look forward to having you there at our fall meal planning workshop next Friday, August 9th at 1 p.m. at the South Branch Library in Creekmore. And we will follow up the, the following Monday, still in uh, South Granville, but we will be at the Senior Center this time. And we are going to be teaching a workshop about being food safe. So on Monday, August 12th at 10 a.m. at the South Granville Senior Center, you don't have to be a senior to attend, but you're more than welcome to come. We're going to be talking about food safety during the summer because the summer is where we see an exponential growth in food safety issues or concerns. So we're going to be talking about four steps to keeping food safe, learning how to stay safe when you're traveling with food or uh, when you're cooking outdoors during the summer months, and just learn how to prevent foodborne illness at home. It is free to attend, but we do have the phone number there to call the Senior Center just to let us know that you're coming so that we can have enough handouts and materials. One of our virtual workshops that we are offering this uh, this month is we are, um, this is a part of a series that we are doing district-wide, Extension at Home. And we have a workshop on focaccia bread art. So learn how to create, you know, bread art, make it appealing to the eye and delightful to the taste but. You can register online. Again, this is at on our um, Person County Eventbrite thing. So you can just scan the QR code and it will take you to a um, our Eventbrite page. And you can see all of the monthly Extension at Home workshops that we have uh, for the rest of this calendar year. This is just the one in August. But since this is one that a, a lot of people are interested in and in, in learning how to make bread or being a little creative when making stuff, we are also offering this at the Extension office on Tuesday, August 13th at noon if you want to come and watch it with us. So we're going to have the Zoom recording up um, in the Extension office and you can 
come and uh, watch the Zoom live at the Extension office. So if you're not comfortable or familiar with, or you don't have the technology, or maybe you don't have good uh, you know, wireless where you live, you can come to the Person County Extension Office. We do ask that you let us know that you are planning to uh, attend so that we can have um, an, enough chairs uh, and enough space available for the viewing of this Zoom live. And you'll have the opportunity if you have questions that you want to ask throughout it, you can let us know. We can type it into the into the Zoom chat as, as well um, there, okay? And then this month, we have not one, but two opportunities for you to learn how to cook with ease. Both of these workshops are offered, are being offered in Granville County at uh, two different senior centers. So whether you're in the Oxford area or the Stovall area, if you were interested in learning new tips or tools or gadgets to help you cook easier, healthier, and more often for your family, this is the workshop for you. We'll be talking about adaptive gadgets and gizmos because we know as we get older, sometimes, you know, our, our mobility or our dexterity or arthritis, whatever, can be causing problems if we're in the kitchen. You know, I can't just hold a knife as well as I used to, or I can't stand as long, or I don't have as good of a grip to open a jar or open a can or something like that. So we're going to talk about some of the gadgets that you can use or purchase uh, different helpful tools that might um, make it easier for you to, to cook for your family, uh, as well as some of the new appliances that are on the market that you might be interested in purchasing or you just have some questions about. So on Tuesday, August 20th at 10 a.m., we will be at the North Granville Senior Center in Stovall. And then the following day on Wednesday, August 21st at 1040 a.m., after their exercise classes, we will be at the Granville Senior Center in Oxford. It is free to attend either one of these workshops, okay? Um, so hopefully you can make one of those. And as I mentioned, we will end out the month with our annual Aging with Gusto conference on Tuesday, August 27th from 9 to 12 p.m. at the Person County office uh, building. Again, it will be free again this year. We hope you can join us and celebrating Older Americans Month theme of being powered by connections because we are all connected and there are so many wonderful connections and resources in both Person and Granville counties. The registration brochure can be found uh, on our website. You can just Google Person County Extension um, at our extension office at 304 South Morgan Street at the Person County Senior Center or you can do the go.ncsu.edu backslash gusto to register for that event. We hope to see you at one or many of these workshops that we have the month of August during pers in Person County or Granville County. We're going to take a brief break and get a word on from one of our sponsors. Do you have those annoying potholes in your driveway? Need some driveway regrading? Or maybe you just need some new gravel? Give JT Allison a call. Jody has been in business for over 25 years, specializing in driveway grading and hauling gravel. He also does all types of small tractor work and some backhoe and bush hogging work. Jody strives to do a top notch job and to make sure that you, the customer, is always happy. Whether it's a small job or a big job, we have multiple truck sizes to accommodate your needs. Here at JT Allison, we appreciate your business. Check us out on Facebook at JT Allison LLC or give us a call at 336-583-6250. Jody and Kim Allison, we are rocking the county one load at a time. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. My name is Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. Uh, before the break, we talked about our Aging with Gusto event and all of the different workshops that we had or we have planned during the month of August. But now I want to switch focus and talk about one of the workshops that we offered this past month in July. Our monthly lunch and learn this past month was focused on uh, how to mind your mind or uh, focused on, you know, mindfulness and meditation. 
And I want to provide you with some of the information that I shared in uh, that workshop. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to start out with a quote. We can't always change what's happening around us, but we can change what happens with us or within us. We can change how we feel about something. It's not always easy, but we need to be more, you know, reflective on what's going on inside um, to help improve our mental health. Because mental health is always a, a concern. And there's a lot of benefits of uh, mindfulness and meditation. One of the things is it helps relieve stress and anxiety by learning, you know, how you can be, you know, more mindful or more, you know, choiceful is the word about when to, you know, when to think about something, you know, you can rewire your brain to help reduce stress and anxiety. Now, I know if you're like me, there's plenty of us that we try to go to bed and then our mind is just going a mile a minute. And it can be very hard to, to settle that. And sometimes it's not about that moment. It's also about all the moments leading up to it. What you were doing, did you have a bedtime routine? Were you just watching something, you know, scary on the TV? And, um, you know, if your adrenaline is spiked from that, then it's going to be harder to control or quiet your mind. But if you're able to do that, it'll give you better focus, better productivity. It'll help you recognize that you have distracting thoughts, or maybe there's certain things, impulses that, you know, uh, occur and that you can let those things pass without indulging in them. You know, the impulse is to to maybe get in bed and turn on the little little night or the light next to you and pick up your phone and start scrolling on your thing. If you can bypass that impulse and just lay down and go to bed because the light, you know, the blue light from your cell phone is um, hindering your melatonin production. And melatonin is the hormone that we try to produce to help us rest. OK, we our body starts naturally producing producing it as it gets darker at night. But if you're putting this light right in your face with a tablet or a phone or even the TV, then you are hindering that melatonin production. You're slowing it down and then your body can have difficulties producing it on its own. Okay. We also just can learn how to be more patient. Mindfulness teaches us to uh, practice patience so that maybe, just maybe, It'll come naturally when we need it a little bit more often. And all of that will help improve your, your sleep there. It'll help you um, be better about uh, making better decisions, how you can observe a situation without, uh, you know, passing judgment. And throughout all of it, if you're feeling better, if you're sleeping better, if you're more productive, if you're more focused, if you're more, you know, introspective, it hopefully will improve your social relationships so that you are able to, to better stay connected uh, and even connect on a deeper level with individuals. So thinking about yourself, you know, what are you feeling right now at this moment as you're, you're listening? Hopefully it's not bored, um, but maybe you're anxious and maybe this is a, a good distraction to help, you know, deal with something that you, you don't want to think about there. Maybe you're very calm. You're just you know, just relax sitting at home. Uh, maybe you're stressed because you're in the car listening on the, on the radio and there's traffic or something like that. One of the first things in order to deal with feelings is you have to be able to recognize how you're feeling and, you know, and, and give yourself that acknowledgement. Okay. I am angry about this because if you take those anger, or those feelings, and you just kind of push them down, then, you know, they're going to rear its ugly head eventually. You know, they're going to pop up probably at the, you know, a bad moment. You know, maybe you're stressed or anxious about something going on in your personal life and you yell at your coworkers or vice versa. Work is stressful and you take it home and then you're not really mad at your family, but they're the ones you yell at. Okay. So one of the things um, I found another quote or another thought is free yourself from the people who cause you drama and poison your soul. So I'm going to repeat that again. Free yourself from the people who cause you drama and poison your soul. And the add-on to that is, you know who they are. They're the first ones you thought about when you heard that. Okay? 
So sometimes we've had people in our lives that maybe they were bad influences or maybe they, um, you know, it, I don't want to blame other people, but some people, you know, are more like to likely to bring out the bad in us. You know, they we, we feed off of each other. You know, I want to be a really good person, not in gossip. But then they come to me and they start gossiping and then it just starts coming out. And I'm like, I know better. I'm not supposed to judge people. I'm not supposed to gossip. It's not helping anything. But they started it and I'm just jumping on the bad wagon doing it. Okay. So maybe I don't need to go in their office to sit down and talk to vent because maybe it's going to lead me into a dark place. I don't know, need to, to do that. I don't know. Uh, maybe I, is there something else I can do? Maybe I need to, uh, you know, turn on some music and and get some of the, the anger, or the frustration out, you know, listening to, to some good music. I don't know. You have to figure out what works for you. So if you are interested in actual meditation, you know, or learning some, watching some mindful videos, there's a lot of good ones, um, on, on YouTube. Um, I, um, there's one that, one channel that I'll go to that had a lot of good videos during the pandemic that, um, I'll go back and refer to every once in a while and it's headspace, you know, you got to get in the right headspace. So they have some calming and mindfulness uh, or meditation videos, but you could just Google and find someone that seems soothing to you has a nice voice or whatever else. Um, or again, it can just be music. It doesn't have to be a person. You can just put on some calming, you know, waves crashing kind of music there. Now, I do recommend that you turn your phone off. You know, you go into a room away from others if you actually want to meditate. You can sit somewhere comfortable, you know, on a cushion or on the floor, but you don't want to be tense. You know, you don't want to be uptight there. And then just focus on your breathing. Just take those deep breaths in, focusing on inhaling and exhaling. You're not letting your mind wander. You're not thinking about any of the stress or any of the, the good or the bad things. You're just thinking about your next breath. You're just thinking about inhaling and exhaling. And, you know, a lot of times you're going to have things that pop up that are trying to distract you. Learning how to manage those distractions is a vital part of the process of meditation. So that's why sometimes I'm just breathe in, you know, and come one, two, three, if you have to count yourself, just that telling myself to breathe in, telling myself to exhale, telling myself to breathe out throughout my, um, my mouth and breathe in through my nose. All of those instructions that I'm giving myself will help me um, <clears throat> manage my distractions there. Okay. So there's different ways you can do it. You can do it, you know, do meditation by doing deep breaths and it'll help slow your heart rate and hopefully help calm you down. You can actually just, you know, meditate and deep breathing can be a part of meditating um, there, or you could just sit silently and just focus, you know, just try to clear the mind and meditate that way. Um, you can do mindful listening or seeing, you know, just focus on something, just focus on a sound, whether it's those wave crashing of that music that you're playing, or maybe you're just going to stare at, you know, watching birds or flowers or whatever else you want to focus on, whatever help calms you there. You can do a body scan. Um, again, you can Google a, a full body scan and they've got several videos on YouTube and it just kind of takes you from your top to your bottom or your bottom up to the top there. And it's like, I just want you to focus on your toes and, you know, how they like relaxing them and just, you know, whatnot. And then I want you to focus on your feet and it goes all the way up and it's getting you to kind of tense and then just completely relax that body part. So by the time you're done with the full body scan, your entire body is relaxed because you took it piece by piece by piece throughout your body. You weren't just like, Hey, relax. You know, you did it body part by body part. Um, again, it's hard to describe uh, when I teach this workshop, uh, in person this month, I actually put on a body scan uh, video and just kind of had that playing. Uh, I don't want to do that in case you're you're driving and I want you um, <laughs> trying to close your eyes or meditate while you're in the middle of traffic or anything there. You can also, also be mindful when you're eating. And a part of that is just slowing down, enjoying the flavors, enjoying, you know, the moment of eating. You know, you're turning that TV off. You're turning all those noise is off all the distractions off and you're just focused on eating okay um 
Again, it could be that you are doing some guided imagery. Maybe it's someplace you've been, or maybe it's someplace you haven't been, but you want to go. You're just focusing on a happy place. You know, oh, I remember when I used to, when we'd go to the beach and I'd walk on the sand and I could smell the ocean and, you know, all that. You can just close your mind, eyes and just focus your mind on that happy place. Like you're there again, almost like it'll take you back to that place. Okay. The American Heart Association has a lot of good resources for your overall heart health. And they also uh, provided the information for this uh, workshop. And this was one of their handouts about loving kindness meditation. It's just a way to practice feeling unconditional compassion, not just for the world or individuals, but also for yourself. So how it kind of works is it wanted you just to sit quietly and direct kindness and love to yourself and then expand that circle out. Um, and sometimes the hardest one to give kindness to is yourself. And it could just, you know, say, you know, you could be just saying a good thought to yourself. I'm kind, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm whatever you want to say about yourself. Or it could just be, you know, may I be happy. May you be happy. May the world be happy. You know, you could be talking about someone else. It could turn into a prayer if that's where you want to go, that you're you're thinking about a coworker or someone you know that's struggling throughout a time, thinking about everything that's going on with the, the world. And it might be that you need to turn off that TV so you aren't hearing all of, if nothing else, the, the politics right now. Um, and you can just start with a few minutes and then just gradually, you know, extend that out to where you're making time for yourself and that you're not always saying negative things to yourself or about yourself. Man, I sure was stupid or I can't believe that or I'm always making mistakes or I failed at that diet again. Give yourself grace and kindness, OK, as well as giving it to, to other people. They're struggling just as much as, as you are. And maybe that smile or that word of kindness that you extend to them, maybe that will be the only nice thing they hear that day, or maybe that'll completely turn their day around, okay? Um, again, whenever I'm talking about something, I'm always gonna talk about mindful eating. Um, again, this is another handout from the American Heart Association talking about meditation uh, and mindful eating. So make every bite a meditation. So mindfulness is, uh, has been growing in, um, you know, in one of the, the theories to help you eat healthier there. And you can incorporate in your, your daily, uh, habits there, you know, first of all, before you, you actually sit down to eat kind of like earlier, we were talking about how are you feeling, you know, check in with yourself. How are you feeling at this moment? How is your hunger? You know, how are you feeling on the hunger scale? Are you you truly hungry? Or are you just eating because you're bored? Are you stressed? Or maybe you're actually thirsty and dehydrated. Oftentimes we mistake um, dehydration for hunger. You're just really thirsty there. Um, take a moment to take it in, you know, when you do have some food. Enjoy, you know, all of your, use all of your senses. How does it smell? How does it taste? How does it look? Um, did you get too much? Is it more than you need? Is the is that a good portion size? Even how you're going to feel afterwards. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I really want this. Oh, I deserve it. And then I eat it and I'm like, oh, I was bad. I shouldn't have done that. Or maybe I should have had a smaller piece. So not only just how are you feeling at the moment, how are you going to feel afterwards? And there's sometimes that I'll look at something and it looks really good, but you know what? That is not worth the 20 minutes I got to get on the treadmill. Or it's not worth the guilt that I'm going to feel afterwards for uh, for for eating that, okay? So just kind of slowing that brain down to we're eating so fast often and it's not giving your brain and the stomach time to, to connect and talk to each other, okay? It takes about 20 minutes for your stomach and your brain to connect to be like, whoa, 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 stop eating. I'm, I'm full. But usually we're eating so fast that that's why we go from being hungry to like feeling stuffed. And I ate more than I should have because you weren't eating slow enough. And it also just will aid in digestion too. And you'll enjoy your food more. I mean, there's been some things I look at, I'm like, oh, that looks really good. I want to eat that. But I just scarf it down there, okay? And then stop when you're full. There's no need to clean the plate. We are not in the clean plate club anymore. It's okay. 
So hopefully this is giving you some, some information so that you are able to be more mindful as you're sitting down to uh, a meal or you're sitting down just um, thinking about all that's going on with your yourself. If you need more information or resources about nutrition, healthy uh, recipes, you want to register for one of our events or workshops during the month of August, or want to know about upcoming series, then please contact the Extension Office. Check us out on our virtual uh, Eventbrite page. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Person Granville FCS. We hope to see you throughout the month of August. And thanks for joining us at, um, at this week's Gardener's Corner program. And we're going to take a, uh, another moment to listen to one of our sponsors. Bye, guys. South Boston Memorials, located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia, has been in business since 1958. The Myers family of South Boston Memorials believe that every life has a story. For four generations, their life work has been to present and preserve that story for our prosperity to hear. Allow South Boston Memorials to tell yours. South Boston Memorials has granite memorials, markers, and mausoleums over 300 in stock. In-house laser etching is available at South Boston Memorials, and they can also make pet markers. For memorial benches, vases, and monuments, Call on South Boston Memorials at 434-572-3859 or visit their website, SoboMemorials.com. That's 434-572-3859. South Boston Memorials is located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia. Like us on Facebook or visit the website, SoboMemorials.com. Give the gift of preservation. South Boston Memorials now offers cleaning options for memorials for your loved ones. Call them today at 434-572-3859.